increased by the city of Dallas by the current council member, um, uh, I'm not the current council, the current member, sorry, the council, um, the tax rate. So that's the, the number of cents you're paying per $100,000. But what's happened is your values have gone up so high that your taxes went up. So when people say, oh, we lowered the tax rate, that is true, but your property values went up so high that your taxes actually went up. You're receiving less city services now than you ever did before, and the city of Dallas is bringing in a record number of tax dollars into our tax base at this point. So yes, with these new builds, a lot of lies have been told out there that you're not going to have your taxes raised. That's a mistruth, because when bigger, brand new properties get built around you, your property value goes up because your land is more expensive. So yes, your tax property values will go up with these all these big mega new developments that are going up. Um, I do not support any um, tax increase at this time. And moving forward, the city of Dallas needs to figure out how to pay for better um, and uh, better um, basic services within its budget without you know sticking it to us. Those that are in the middle class. We bear the brunt of it. The very rich and wealthy, they do not. So I'm not for any tax increases for the next um, three to five years. The city of Dallas has got to rein this in. We spend money on different departments and divisions that either should be merged or should not exist at all. But whenever they, um, but whenever they need some money, we get a property tax increase, and that's how we see that. So I do not um, support it. And she, when she throws up the sign, I lose my thought. But <laughs> yeah, but no, I don't. Um, and then I would like to see any um, property tax increases go before the voters in a referendum in, during our November election so that you approve whether or not we're going to get it. And if the voters say yes, then they say yes. But I don't support it as a council or wouldn't support it as a council member. Uh, the short answer is yes, your property values will increase. That's a unfortunate side effect of the economic development that is being seen. Uh, Representative Johnson has a bill in Austin that seeks to help curb some of this and protect neighborhoods from exactly what's happening in West Dallas. Uh, and then the unspoken fact is that no one's talking about working with the county to properly evaluate commercial real estate. There is a huge undervaluation of commercial real estate in this county and in this city. For example, the Dallas Morning News building is on the tax rolls at $14 million. So Dallas Morning News pays taxes on $14 million. Yet, when they go to sell it, the sale price is $30 million. So while we are getting pinched and while we're getting squeezed, the developers and the landowners and the commercial property in this county is vastly, vastly underappraised. And I will seek to end that, close that gap, and use that money to get back to the resources that we deserve. Up, those restaurants that are going up, those high dollar condominium, $1,250 a month. Can you afford it? They pay $350 or $550 a month. They can't afford it. Along with the building of it, all these new buildings, infrastructure, what's going on, your taxes have to go up. How are you going to pay for that infrastructure if you don't charge the people? So that's what should have been thought of at the very beginning of all this gentrification movement. At the very beginning, not now. It's too late to talk about it now. So it should have been taken care of earlier. And folks, yes, get ready for it because it's coming. Thank you. The question is, does the tax rates go up? Of course, it's dependent on the neighborhoods that you live. And, and based on the evaluation that the Dallas um, Central Appraisal District has to evaluate it, you have an opportunity to be able to um, uh, be able to, to share with them what the process is and be able to tell them, okay, if, if this is how you evaluate it, tell me how. There is uh, something that you can be able to tell them that you uh, want to dispute that, that you don't agree with it based on what they say, and you have that opportunity. One of the things that I want to make sure that, that we all understand is one, yes, we represent the city, but we also have to be respectful of the county, the state, and the federal government policies and procedures to be able to work with them and obtain what they provide to us. There is always an opportunity for you to be able to dispute what you do not agree on. And yes, we um, not only um, brought our tax rate down, 
but we have that opportunity to be able to give it to you, and you have that opportunity to be able to dispute it. And so I wanted to make sure that that was clarified. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, number of you admitted that you will have taxes going up, and so I would like to have you answer your plan for how you will help the neighborhood keep their taxes low. Okay, so I am completely not in favor of raising taxes. Um, so just to make sure that that was clear, I'm not sure the question was a little, um, I wasn't sure at the beginning what it meant. So I am not in favor of raising taxes. What I'm in favor of doing is taking the money that is brought in and making sure it's spent properly and spent in the neighborhoods. We've got to start focusing on quality of life, getting our parks and recs taken care of, affordable housing, all of these things are, are monies that can be spent if we move it away from spending it on boondoggle projects, big giant bridges, big shiny new buildings that we're still paying for. And a lot of people don't know this, Large Marge, the big old Margaret Cunco Bridge, do you know how much it costs a year in taxes to maintain that, that bridge? $700,000 a year. That's a boondoggle project. Yes, we've got this big, beautiful bridge, but we are taking tons of money and we're having to continue to pay for this um, and we're not getting any, anything out of it for you, the neighborhoods. And that's what I want to do, is improve our quality of life in our neighborhoods. Affordable housing. The city of Dallas, we have a critical um, um, supply of affordable housing, so that's one way. But in this district, and especially this area, that's pretty hard. So, I mean, it's um, going to be a challenge. So, we've got to find areas where we can actually construct units that people can afford so that you know it's at a comfortable income level. Also, I want to see more retail in this area so that, again, money is trickling in and staying in West Dallas. So those are just a few of the things that um, I would do. There's um, more, but I'm going to defer to um, Alex. Um, I think, of course, everyone's against raising the you know, taxes, just to put that out there. Um, I think working with the state is a key issue because um, there are bills that can be proposed at the state level and that's where the tax increases generally come from as it goes through the legislature. And as a former aide to Representative Rafael Chia, I know the process fairly well. Um, like I said before, proper valuation of commercial real estate is, a, is hundreds of millions of dollars that is not being taxed. And the city is not doing anything to work with the county to properly appraise that. So while we are in the pinchers, the county is letting the developers and big landowners off the hook. Um, so with that in mind, if we can squeeze out that money from the big guys, then we need to go back to the basics, fix our streets, clean up our parks, put money into rec centers, after school youth programs, uh, the long list of things before we go build symphony centers, deck parks, bridges, and opera houses. And I'm not certain everyone understood the first question, but I guess this question is, oh, we require taxes, absolutely not. I would, and it's not that I want to, it's that I would. I'm not going to say I'm going to, I'm, I want to try, I want to do it. I want to make sure that our taxes don't go up. Well. You have to advocate for that. You can't sit in the back of the room and say, oh, it's okay, silence is condoning. Everybody understand that? Silence is condoning. So we don't stand up and talk about it. We don't stand up and say, no, these people have been sacrificed enough. The people in West Dallas, to me, are like stepchildren. That's the how they're being treated, like stepchildren, because they're not the first. They're not the first in the, in the order of line of thinking. How, how is the city affecting them? Big time. These poor folks have been living there for years and paying very, very low rents. There's nowhere in the world, nowhere else in Dallas, are they going to find a house for 350 to 550 a month. It's impossible. But what we got to do, I, as your city council person, have to go in there and advocate. <laughs> the question is, do you plan to help neighborhoods to keep their rates low? And that is something that we've been working on, uh, uh, being able to explain what the process is. And I shared with you that not everything is, not everyone gets the same process because as you know, there are also uh, a group of, of individuals that we talked about, and that is our seniors. The seniors don't get the taxes, and that is something that they came from 
the state. Again, we make sure that we not only follow what our city procedures are, but we also be, have to be respectful and be able to do what it is in the county and the state, as well as federal government. And this comes from them and it trickles down to us for us to be able. So having a conversation with us, that is, yes, that is correct as far as the rate is concerned, but also wanting to make sure that we have an understanding of what the process is within the state and the federal government. Thank you. Yes, as a proprietor, I've seen my taxes go up every, every year. Even, even, uh, even down here in West Dallas, Oak Cliff is almost like 50% more, it seems like it down here, because I pay over here like 1600 and Oak Cliff is almost to $3,000 over there by Bishop Arts. And, uh, we'll do, all we can do is just, like we said, like Alex said here, we'll, hit the, we'll, we'll have to hit the state, and uh, you guys need to get prepared, because that is just a fact of life. Our taxes will go up every year. All these property and businesses going up, we're gonna have to we're gonna, we're gonna have to do something, especially if you, if you own several houses. You know, you only have that one 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 house that you can claim as your own, but it's just a part of a part of life. I've never seen seen the taxes go down, not especially on property. So that's just something we have to plan for, and hopefully we can do something with the state. Thank you. What is your plan to hire more police officers and to retain the ones that? The first thing that we have to do for the ones that are still on the force is we've got to do a pay increase that we can stagger over three years so that we get them to the same pay grade level as their counterparts in the suburbs. That's one of the reasons that we have lost 450 plus. For um, recruitment, the um, city passed, and I'm not sure when it was uh, not that recent um, ago, where they added um, a provision where the person, if it was a person um, 18 to 19, if they had 60 credit hours, then they could apply to the force, and then if they were 20 to 21 and had 45 credit hours, then they could. That provision wasn't there, so that would help. We need to tap into a resource that no one has thought about, and that's retired officers. Bring them um, back on as contractors, have them go and do recruiting activities throughout the state and outside of the state so that we can get people um, on our force and do um, um, relocation, um, if it's out of the state, relocation um, subsidies so that people can move here and start working to protect you. Starting salary for a Dallas police officer is $44,000. Plano is $63,000, and Arlington is $59,000, and the Grand Prairie is $54,000. Our officers, our men and women that are putting their lives on the line every day, are being paid over $10,000 less than what their counterparts in other suburbs are making. So the first step to re recruit better officers is to pay them more. That is, they put their lives on the line, and that's what they deserve. Second, we need to make good on our pension promises. The city of Dallas gave unreasonable promises to these officers, yet a deal is a deal, your word is your word, and we cannot sit here and claw back the retirement money that we promised those officers. Because why would someone go to work every day, put their life on the line, if the city's not gonna hold up their end of the bargain? So we need to pay them better, we need to fulfill our pension requirements, and then we need to provide incentives for officers that wanna live in the community and live in Dallas. Two things that, that keep us from getting officers, like Mr. Dickley said, pay. Pay is way, way, way too low. Number two, 